the system of equations We must deal with them all at once Always looking for solutions Positive outlook overcomes Hello, my name is Roy Simpson, professor of mathematics at Cosumnes River College in Sacramento, California. This video is another video in a series for linear algebra students covering null spaces and now the column space of a given matrix. You should have already watched my videos or be familiar with null spaces and all the stuff in linear algebra up to this point. Remember the null space is just a formalized phrase we're going to use for the set of all solutions to the homogeneous matrix equation AX equals zero. Now we're going to formalize another set that we never actually had a name for. Well, we sort of did, but now we're going to formalize it in a different way. The column space. Well, the column space of an M by N. So again, a non-square matrix A. It does not have to be square. It can be square, but it doesn't have to be. The column space of an M by N matrix A, written as the call of A, is the set of linear combinations of the columns of A. Well, that's pretty nice. If A is the matrix A sub one, all the way to A sub N, where those are column vectors, then the column space of A is just the span of those vectors. Yay, super nice, right? In set building notation, which by the way, is usually written as set builder notation, the column space of A is equal to the set of vectors B such that B is equal to AX for some X in RN. So this set we actually did have a name for. When you talk about linear transformations, this set of vectors that forms the column space of A is actually just the range of our linear transformation. So the column space is really a fancy phrase for the range of our linear transformation. But again, that's of a linear transformation. So if we're not dealing with transformations, then to say range kind of doesn't make sense. However, we do know that matrix vector multiplications are actually linear transformations. So in essence, column space is the range of your linear transformation AX. So now we have defined two sets. The one, which is the set of all solutions to AX equals zero, that'll be our null space and the other being the set of all vectors B such that AX equals B for any X in our domain, or basically for any X in our N. So therefore the column space is the range. Now often I would follow that with an example, but I think a theorem's better to talk about here. So the column space of an M by N matrix is a subspace of RM, just like the null space is a subspace of RN. And the proof of this is very fast. By definition, the column space of a matrix A is just the set of all linear combinations of the columns of A. Well, that would be the same as the span of the columns of A. And we have a previous theorem. I'm not sure if I have it in my critical theorem list, but we have a previous theorem. And yes, I do have it in my critical theorem list. This theorem states that if you have vectors in a vector space V, then the span of those vectors is a subspace of the vector space V. Well, these vectors A1 through AN are in the vector space RM because each of them have M elements. So therefore the span of those vectors is a subspace of RM. And since that span of those vectors is a column space of A, that implies the column space of A is a subspace of RM. Remember subspaces are also vector spaces, so this means the column space of A is a vector space as well. Now we get to an example. Find a matrix A such that the given set is the column space of A. That is, we want to find a matrix A such that the span of its columns is this set of vectors right here. A better way to write that set of vectors is this right here. I've now written that set of vectors as a linear combination of these very special three vectors right here. These are 
the vectors that will form the spanning set. And in fact, now that I've said that word spanning or that phrase spanning set, I'll say that this is equal to the span of those vectors. Remember, this is just all linear combinations of those three vectors, and so is the shorthand version of it. That is the set of all linear combinations of those vectors. Thus, that tells us that the matrix A should be comprised of just those three vectors. So we have found our matrix A, where the column space of that matrix A generates this set of vectors here, which is the same thing as that set of vectors there, which is the same thing as the span of those three vectors there. So the column space of A is somewhat easy to write down explicitly. That is, if somebody walks in the room and hands us a matrix, I can quickly write down the column space of A. If they handed me this matrix, I would say, oh, the column space is a span of those three columns. Bam, I'm done. Whereas when you're talking about the null space of a matrix, that requires you to solve AX equals zero. So there's a little bit of work to do that. And I will summarize that a little bit later on. So now we're gonna round this out with a theorem. And I'm not gonna bother proving this theorem because it's actually proved in most linear algebra textbooks. I just wanna talk about it here. So it's an if and only if, so it goes both directions. It's a bijection. The column space of an M by N matrix A is all of RM. If and only if the equation AX equals B has a solution for every single B in RM. Now let me read this backwards. If you are handed a matrix equation and they don't tell you exactly what B is, they say that B is arbitrary, but this equation always has a solution. We already know from previous work that there are a lot of implications from that statement. Specifically, if you're one of my students, I have this nice clean, well, somewhat clean table here, which gives us the invertible matrix theorem along with the existence equivalence theorem and the uniqueness equivalence theorem. Well, if you look at the existence equivalence theorem, which is not about square, but instead rectangular matrices, which is what we're gonna work with for the time being, if we know that for each B in our M, AX equals B has a solution, then we know that B is a linear combination of the columns of A. And we also know the columns of A span RM, and that is the critical piece here. The columns of A span all of RM. That is the column space of A is RM. And actually I've modified the table to have that down below. The column space of A is now all of RM. And just to give you a heads up, there's something very similar about the null space of A. Remember the null space of A is a set of all solutions to AX equals zero. Well, if the only solution to AX equals zero is zero itself, and that should be a vector to be very honest with you, then we know that the homogeneous equation only has a trivial solution. It doesn't have a free variable. A doesn't have free variables. The columns of A are linearly independent. A has a pivot in each column. The linear transformation T, which is based on A, is one to one. So all of these are equivalent statements. I'm just adding to them as I move forward. So that's all I really wanted to do in this video. I hope that this has helped you out. In the next video, we're going to kind of start gluing together null space and column space, not really gluing them, but comparing them. So you can really get a clear distinction of the two in your mind. I hope to see you there. Have a great day and be a wonderful human being. It's the system of equations. We must deal with them all at once. Always looking for solutions. Positive outlook overcomes. Obstacles getting in our way comes. Effects more than we can sometimes see. For what they are and work together until you feel at peace. Listen close, don't talk too much, that isn't kosher. You may really hurt inside, it doesn't justify you to speak too loud and cry.